Hey, I'm John Grant, and welcome back to the Johnny Grant Show. I'm joined by my man, Drew Ziegler. We saw eight NFL teams fire their head coaches after the regular season. All eight vacancies have now been filled, so Drew and I are going to give these hires a grade. So first up, the Falcons hired Raheem Morris. He was, uh, his first time being a head coach was with the Bucks in 2009, and he was actually the interim head coach in 2020. I, I gave this hire a B- minus because... It didn't really work out that well when he was in Atlanta, and I don't know. I feel like they have those offensive guys in Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and I think that I thought that it would have been an offensive guy that they would have went with. But players love Raheem Morris, so that's something that I like about the hire. That's why I gave it a B minus instead of a C. But it was a solid. I give it a solid hire. Yeah, similar to you, I gave it a C plus. Like you said, a defensive coach, you would think, with Bijan and Drake London, Kyle Pitts, they'd go offensive. But one positive, he did bring Zach Robinson, mm -hmm. Rams passing game coordinator and QB coach, who will have a big role in the offense, obviously being the offensive coordinator. So I think this is mid-grade hire. It's not going to bring you a Super Bowl or anything, but they're going to be a competent team. And he did have one really good year when he was the head coach of the Bucks. Mm -hmm. Next up, the Panthers hired... Dave Canales, who was the Bucks offensive coordinator last season, but he spent 13 years with the Seahawks as an offensive assistant before that. I gave this also a B minus just because he only spent one season as a coordinator. And teams are they they like the idea of a young offensive minded head coach because that's what's been winning in the NFL recently. But I don't I don't know if this move is just too much trying to reach for that fact of having a young offensive coach and just you know what I'm trying to say like he only had one year as a coordinator so that's what the I think what they should do to make this the best possible move is bring in an old defensive coordinator to help him out like when the Rams had Sean McVay they had Wade Phillips there who's a defensive genius and they won a Super Bowl together yeah for me I gave it a B I like this hire but definitely only time will tell, as you said, not a lot of experience leading. Only an offensive coordinator one year. He was with the Seahawks for a while, working with Russell Wilson and that whole offense. Mm -hmm. But he proved it last year with Baker, having the best year of his career by far, and now Baker getting a big payday. So maybe he can do the same thing with Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that Seattle would be a little bit more interested in him in, the, in their head coaching search just because he spent so much time with them and but I don't even think they interviewed him yeah I mean that could have been an option for the Seahawks but I think they had their sights set on somebody else yeah. from the get-go so next up the commanders they hired Dan Quinn uh I think that this move I gave it a D because I think that it was just the last guy around kind of move they waited I think they were, they were waiting around for Ben Johnson and Mike McDonald Ben Johnson took himself out of the running and Mike McDonald went to Seattle so and then they just kind of had to go find somebody Dan Quinn was the next best option I think this is the same exact move as having Ron Rivera as their head coach yeah it seemed like like you said not their first option definitely new ownership also they have so that could factor in but mm -hmm. Dan Quinn more of a defensive guy again recently it's been more offensive coaches leading and yeah but people do forget he made the Super Bowl with mm -hmm. the Falcons and should have won it obviously but he was the Cowboys defensive coordinator the last three years. He's obviously got a lot of experience. And I'm excited to see what the commanders can do with him. And I'd say definitely a great offensive coordinator is needed for this team to mm -hmm. succeed, though. They hired Kingsbury. I do yeah. like that move. Uh, I mean, I love Dan Quinn just because he was the Seattle defensive coordinator when, I mean, the Legion of Boom was around. We won a Super Bowl. And he went off fast to the become the Falcons head coach but yeah people don't talk about he was he went to a Super Bowl with the Falcons so he's not he's not just some chump head coach he's something so next up the Patriots hired Jared Mayo this hire I gave it a B just because no one really you can't you don't really know that much about it just because it was a, in the organization hire it was three days after Bill Belichick was fired they hired him so they obviously knew who the next guy was going to be and he was their linebackers coach for from since 2019. He's been their linebackers coach, and he was a All Pro and Pro Bowl linebacker for the Patriots. So I mean, he's been a Patriot for pretty much his whole life, and it was clearly planned out that he was going to be the guy to take over for Belichick. Yeah, it seems like it's been for years. If Belichick were to fall, Mayo would be the next guy up, despite only mm -hmm. being a linebackers coach. But 
he was a great linebacker for them, winning a Super Bowl with them, and as you said, an All Pro. So I think this is a good hire. I gave it a B minus. Just really can't grade it yet because you don't really know how he is. Mm-hmm. Leading I mean, the only as a people that really know how good he's going to be as a head coach is Robert Kraft and the New England Patriots. So next up, my favorite hire: the Seattle Seahawks hired Mike McDonald, who was the Ravens defensive coordinator for the past two seasons and before that was the Michigan defensive coordinator in 2021. Uh, I really like this hire. I'm a Seattle fan. I think that he was the best target out there. I think that me giving this an A is kind of hypocritical because I was just saying how Dave Canales was kind of inexperienced. But I think that it's kind of different because that Ravens defense this season was something else. And I think that he's going to come to Seattle and he's going to bring back that great defensive play that we used to see from Pete Carroll that kind of died down towards the end of his time with Seattle. Yeah, I think Devon Witherspoon and Tariq Warren are also going to. Exactly. He's been with the Ravens for about 10 years now, defensive coach, and they've had Mm -hmm. great defenses for the last 10 years, basically. Mm -hmm. And it could be due to him. And especially with the Seahawks now, can't recreate the Legion of Boom, but they've got a lot of great players out there. Mm-hmm. Julian Love, Quandre Diggs, and young corners on the edges, Tariq Woolen and Devon Witherspoon. So Who got robbed yeah. from the defensive rookie of the year. A lot to work with there for sure. Yeah. A whole lot to work with. I think that was I think it was a no brainer when he was left between the options of Seattle and Washington. I mean, if you want to go to a project or you want to go to a place that you can win now. So next up is the Titans. They hired Brian Callahan. I gave this a C minus. I think I have no problem with the hire. I'm just it's like why did you? I don't understand the firing of Mike Vrabel at all. Uh, he was the Bengals offensive coordinator from for four years. They've had a very good offense for those past four years, even without with or without Burrow. They show that this season. Uh, I have no problem with it, like I said, but I just do not agree with Mike Vrabel not being a head coach in the NFL next season. Yeah, I feel like this was kind of overlooked because of the firing of Rabel. I don't think it was mm-hmm. a bad hire at all. I gave it a B. He's been an offensive coach around the league since 2010. He won a Super Bowl with the Broncos as an assistant when Peyton Manning was there. So he's obviously worked with some great quarterbacks, and he's been with Burrow. He's been with the Bengals since 2019. And there's rumors also that T. Higgins might want to go there mm-hmm. because he's there. So obviously recruitment does not hurt. And, yeah, I don't think this was a bad hire at all. I guess maybe – the organization was probably just looking at it as they just needed a fresh start, but I don't agree with Mike Vrabel not being a head coach at all. And I think that it is giving the Brian Callahan hire kind of a bad rap, but it definitely doesn't. It, I'm only giving it a C minus just because I'm mad that Vrabel is not going to be a head coach. I really do like Vrabel. Uh, next up, the Raiders. They hired Antonio Pierce. I gave that an A minus just because I, I, I really. They, they Two years in a row, they've had this situation or two years before this with yeah. uh rich Passaccia, and they didn't pick him and then they hired josh mcdaniels which was the wrong decision and everybody told them that it was the wrong decision and i thought that that was going to happen again but they made the right decision going with antonio pierce i think max crosby probably played a big part in that and uh i just yeah he's very probably inexperienced but they won games with him they put 63 on the Chargers, they beat the Chiefs with him, and the players love him. I mean, look, look they, he completely flipped the culture around in Vegas last season. Yeah, exactly what I was gonna say. The players love playing for him, which is obviously huge for a team. Just huge momentum mm-hmm. shift for this Raiders team, where their organization was going downhill. And as a Giants fan myself, great leading middle linebacker for mm-hmm. them. Won a Super Bowl that 2007-2008 season, and. Yeah, I was only hoping as a Giants fan he wouldn't get hired here to maybe come be the defensive coordinator for the Giants, but good for him. Yeah. I gave it an A- minus as well. So our last hire was the Chargers getting Jim Harbaugh to finally leave Michigan. I mean, that's obviously an A, coming off of a national championship victory. He actually came into the league with, since Bill Belichick's not in the league, with the highest NFL win percentage for a head coach just because of his time with the 49ers, which I think is a crazy stat. And, I, I mean, he just looks right in that Chargers blue. And I, th- I, I think that's the perfect, literally was the perfect possible hire they could have had. Yeah, the only reason he 
left the 49ers was because he wanted more control over the organization. Mm -hmm. He was obviously a great head coach. He went 44-19-1, made the Super Bowl, lost to his brother, obviously. And, yeah, he was at Michigan since 2015, won the championship this past season. So just a lot of experience all over. And he might look to draft some of his Michigan guys this year heading into the league. And I think this Chargers team, this is exactly what they needed. Exactly they might finally they get over that hump, but mm -hmm. there is a big problem with the salary cap, obviously. Yeah. And they're going to have to make a lot of trades or cuts. And that's all. Uh, thank you so much, Drew, for coming on today.